This video will be about the strand of earth sciences. I'll give you an overview and description of the strand, and then I will show you an example that falls under earth sciences. So watch all the way to the end, and I hope you have fun with the activity. What is earth science about? This strand helps children learn more about our planet by interacting in direct contact with earth objects, events, and nature. Through earth science, children will learn about the properties and characteristics of earth objects and materials, and also changes in the earth. Some fields that fall under earth science include geology, meteorology, oceanography, and astronomy. There are five earth science foundations to learning. The first foundation is the characteristics of earth materials such as sand, soil, rocks, water, and air, and the child can use their, their senses to observe differences between these types of materials. For example, if you wanted the child to compare differences between sand and soil, the child can tell you the differences in how they feel or how they look, the purposes of each one, and where they can find these different types of earth materials. Another example of how children can learn about the characteristics of earth materials is to understand the properties of them. So if a child went to make a sand castle, he would need to learn that he needs to combine sand with water to, to um, create a stable structure. The second foundation is learning about natural objects in the sky, such as the sun, the moon and stars, and clouds, and also about how they move and how they change. The third foundation is learning about changes in weather as it relates to natural objects in the sky. So for example, if the child sees more clouds in the sky, it may mean that there might be rain, or it could just be a cloudy day, and also, or if it's a sunny day, that a sunny day would be warmer than a cloudy day or a rainy day. The fourth foundation is to understand how the effects of weather and seasonal changes can have on their own lives and the plants and animals and the environment around them. For example, if it's raining outside, the child will learn that they may need to wear a raincoat or boots or carry an umbrella. Or maybe if it's even really sunny outside, they can also use the umbrella to protect them and shield them from the sun. The last and very important foundation is for the child to learn how to take care of the environment and take part in related activities such as recycling or putting trash in garbage cans and what not to throw down our drains. So each year on April 22nd, around the world, people celebrate Earth Day. And this is an annual event that is to help us to demonstrate support for environmental protection. So when I made this video, which is in um, April of 2020, when we're all sheltering in place from the pandemic of COVID-19, um, I was thinking that maybe Earth is just trying to detox from us and all the things that we do to our planet. And so in 2020, it just happened to be the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. An example of an earth science activity can include different types of earth materials, such as sand or soil or rocks or things that you can find in nature. So I'm going to show you just a couple of things so the kids can just, if you have different types of rocks that are available, then they can look at different rocks and maybe sort them according to color or size or texture. A great thing to use is a magnifying glass where the child can just look at the rock a little bit more closely and they can tell you what do you see. Like this one is really smooth and then maybe there's not so many bumps whereas this one has more bumps so different activities you can do with rocks another activity that you can use with earth materials are leaves so a classic experiment would be the leaf rubbing experiment so let me show you how to do that really quick so you can just put some leaves underneath a piece of paper different types of leaves that way the children can um, play with the different types of textures and and this stuff is fun to do outside because that's where you find earth science materials and just put it down um, you can use crayons you can use colored pencils and you can have them do different colors so i'm just going to do a little bit but you can just have them rub it and then so they can see one type of leaf perhaps and then they can choose a different leaf and then um, 
see how that feels underneath their pencil. And then I'll just do this big one. And just rub it all over. Crayon would be easier. Um, I just happen to have my colored pencils handy and honestly couldn't find my crayons. So I thought I would illustrate it with pencils. They, their fine motor skills would have to be a little bit more developed in order to use the colored pencils, but you can have them maybe use both. So that is an example of one activity that you can do with earth science materials. Earth science activities can also teach children how to take care of our planet. So one example is water pollution, teaching children about what clean water looks like and what happens when there is a lot of trash in it, what happens when we dump litter or garbage into our water, such, our, our, such, such as our oceans. So you can have them observe water. So here's a um, clean, a bottle of clean water. And well, they're both clean right now, but this is going to represent the clean water. We're not going to put anything in it. And this is going to be the bottle that we are going to dump litter in. And you can also, if they're old enough, you can print this out. This was on Pinterest and um, there's other types of sheets, but they can draw pictures of what they see. So this is an example of keeping records, you know, having the child keep a record or um, just writing or drawing what they see. So they can leave, just draw what they see, the difference between a, a water without trash and one with trash. And they can write some more um, words if they know how. Okay, so then you can ask the child, what do you think will happen? Or what kind of things do people throw away into the ocean or at the beach? And they might say, well, dirty napkins after they eat their lunches. So let's throw that in. Maybe there's just some other garbage. Let's throw these little twig things in. Straws. I know this is has been banned because it hurts the sea turtles, but that does go into the ocean. And then maybe you had a hamburger and it was wrapped in foil. So just dump all the hamburger wrapping into our ocean because it's there and it's easy. Or just paper, you know, just paper. Um, sunscreen. I'm going to sunscreen. We have to be careful. We should only use the mineral based. This is one that uh, is not mineral based. This is the chemical one. So I put that in there. And then, so here's some more representation of hamburger wrappings, food things, little leftover chips. Let's dump that into the sand and inner ocean, shall we? Maybe you peeled a tangerine or an orange or something or a peach. And then here's the seed, dump it in because I don't feel like walking to the garbage can. And let's just dump all these food dropping in. I'm making this during the COVID-19, so I'm just gonna have one sheet of toilet paper because that is all I can spare. Let's stick that in too. And then maybe you have, you think, okay, well, I'll just have some leftover juice or whatever thing that was liquid and you pour that into the ocean also. Um, maybe you have some other things. Here's a spoon and some dirt and maybe some coffee grounds and you're thinking, ah, it's no big deal. Just, just toss it all in. And so, now you can see and the child would be able to see that there is a difference between polluted water and unpolluted water ask them what they think will happen when the fish swim in the polluted water or you know what do they see what are some consequences and hopefully by doing experiments like this the children will learn how to take better care of our earth